Okay, everyone, we're looking at we're looking at Inquiry Lab Area of Irregular Figures, which starts on page 713. Obviously, you can hear that my voice is still not with me, but I wanted to make sure I get this video posted for you, so hopefully you can bear with it. The inquiry is, how can you estimate the area of an irregular figure? So the first story they give us is the Ramirez family is putting a koi pond in their backyard. They need to estimate the area of the pond to know how many fish they can put in the pond. A scale drawing of the pond is shown below. In the drawing, each square represents one square foot. So we want to find out what do we know and what do we need to know. So go ahead and answer those questions. Pause the video now. And when you come back, I'll have the answers. All right, so the what do you know is that there's a scale drawing of the pond shown, and that in the drawing, each square represents one square foot. What do you need to know? Well, you need to find the estimate of the area of the pond so that they can figure out how many fish. So step one is to shade in the, and count the number of whole squares the pond covers. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. So I'm going to zoom in to this picture here of the pond that I glued here. And we're going to shade in each whole square that we have. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five. So I'm thinking, and I don't know, maybe you disagree with me, but I'm thinking it's thirty five. So I'm going to write 35 for the whole squares of the pond. Step 2 says to estimate the number of whole squares covered by partial. So this one's going to be a little bit different because we're going to have to try and like, this is where the estimating really happens. we got to have to piece together parts to make holes. So, um, and we're completely estimating. So here I'm going to call that one hole, those two pieces together. And then this piece and this piece, I'll put those together and make two whole. And then these two seem like they're halves, so I'm going to put those together and make three whole. And then, let's see. So going down here, these three together I think make one whole, so I'm up to four, right? Yep, four. And then, um, let's say this part and this part go together to make the fifth one. And then these three can make another one, make that number six. Uh, let's say this spot and this spot will make number seven. And let's see. We'll just say this one and this one make eight or nine. Because we've got those little pieces here. Okay, so we'll say nine altogether. So nine partials. And so that was just completely me you know, trying to make it work, okay? Not exact, estimating. That's all that is. Oops. So I'm going to say that that is 9. And so we're going to add the two together, 35 square feet and the 9 square feet, and we're going to say that it's a total of 44 square feet. So the area of the pond is about 44 square feet. Alright, activity number two says another way to estimate the area of an irregular figure is to separate the figure into similar sh simpler shapes um, to find the sum of those areas. So you know formulas for triangle, trapezoid, rectangle, um, square, parallelogram, all those good things. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this picture and the first thing that they're saying is let's separate it into a triangle and a rectangle because we've got this shape of um, Idaho and they're saying well let's call this um, our triangle and this can be our rectangle okay um, I think you could have also changed it to um, a trapezoid to make it look like this um, so we've got a lot of op options and that's something that you guys will have to show your work to really be able to identify for me so the first one that they said, and let's go with what they have as triangle and rectangle. They found the area of a triangle, so they used area equals one half times base times height. And using the numbers given, 
Um, they knew that this was one uh, 481, and over here we had 70. So if we take the 481 and we subtract the 70 from it, that's going to give us this section right here. So we've got, um, oh, that's 170. So we have 481 minus 170, and that's our 311. So we're going to say that this part is 311 miles. Then um, we need to figure out the distance here. Now they've given us that this bottom hole part is 300, and they get, they're telling us that this section right here is 100. So obviously we're going to take the 300 minus the 100, and we'll get our 200. So this section right here is going to be 200. So now using those dimensions, we can solve 1 half, and we use 200 for the base, and then 311 for the height. 1 half of 200 is 100. 100 times 311 is 31,100. So this is the area for just this portion right here. We're going to say that's 31, 100. And then for the area of the rectangle, it's just going to be length times width or base times height, whatever you want to use. Remember that we're doing OSS, so we need to write that down. And we know that it's going to be 300 by 170. So we do 300 times 170, which is 51,000. So that part is 51,000. So to find the total area, we're going to take our 31,100 and our 51,000. We're going to add them together to get 82,100. So the area of Idaho is approximately 82,100 square miles. Now let's try it with um, using trapezoid and see where that would have taken us. So I'm just going to get rid of this so we can see the picture a little bit better. All right, and so somewhere on the side, if you could draw this shape. If you want to use a separate piece of paper, you can. I know it's not really to scale. But we know that this side is 481 miles, and that this is 170 miles, and this is 300 miles. And so if we're using the formula, area equals one-half times height <coughs> times base plus base. One-half. Now remember that our um, bases are the parallel lines, okay? So that's these two. So the height is where it comes to a right angle, which is right here. So we're gonna say that the height is 300. And then base is 41 plus 170. So half of, a, of 300, I know already, is 150. And 481 plus 170 is 651. So now I'm going to do 150 times 651. All right, when I finish up that math, I find that it's going to be 97,650. Now, considering that we're um, majorly estimating here, I'm not going to say that the 82,100 is more accurate than the 97,650 because they're both estimates. All right, the next. All right, now these are the ones that you guys should do on your own. Um, again, you can count the squares and then try and find the partials, but I honestly think that the easier method is to separate it into to chunks, um, into different shapes, and find the area of each shape. So, um, it's up to you which method you want to use. When you come back, I'll show you what one and two is, to me anyway, and see if yours is kind of comparable. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so... For the first one, um, you know, both, first of all, both of these are overestimates because I see a lot of white in my tracing. So that's going to indicate that I have a lot of overestimating going on. Now I left the toes out of this one, so let's pretend like that's going to make a difference. But my estimate came out to be 57.5 units squared for number one. And yours could be anything. It could be, you know, 15 lower than that, 15 higher than that. I don't think higher is the way to go, but if you had something lower, that'd be okay. Um, maybe you made a rectangle out of this base of the foot, and then you made a triangle out of this part. That's perfectly fine. And then for um, number two, I came up with 40 units squared. Again, I see a lot of white, so I know that's an overestimate. Um, 
So if yours is a little bit lower than that, then that makes sense still too. All right now number three and four, go ahead and do those. Pause the video. So for number three, I would get like something around 73,000 miles squared. Miles squared. When I combine the two figures and based on what measurements you decide to use um, for this, if you want to make it a rectangle or if you want to make a trapezoid, whatever it was that you chose to do and what numbers you chose to use, um, came out to be whatever you end up having. So, but around 70, 73,000 I think is a, is a decent-ish estimate. And remember, we're talking about estimates, so that could be different. Pause the video, I'll come back with number four. Now number four I thought was a lot more straightforward, so nine inches squared is what I can do. Made it into three separate rectangles. Alright, do number five and six. Pause the video and we'll come back to the answers.